everybody. My name's Alan. I'm half of the crew. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, I was just sitting here, I guess, as the rest of you are watching the opening video. And on one, on one part of the opening video, there's that you know beautiful little blonde boy, you know, my godson, sitting on my lap, and you know we're meditating, and then we're playing together, and then we're laughing together. And I was just thinking, you know. For all of us, we're all children at one time. All of us who think we're important, as uh, uh, Bob Dylan said, even the President of the United States has, sometimes has to stand naked. All of us were children. All of us were naked. All of us came into this world with that childlike quality, with that beauty, with that innocence of that little boy. And, and how do we progress to the point where we have different countries and different religions and different races and different sexual preferences and all the differences that we see and we don't recognize that childlike quality, that love that connects us all. You know, now when I'm sitting here, as far as I know, I mean, when I came into the studio tonight, there was an international incident with a spy plane. Now we know all the countries that can are spying on each other, either through one means or another. What? Where did the trust go? Where did that childlike quality go? Where did that love go? And for us, and for why we do Bridging Heaven and Earth, and why guests come in from all over the world, is to let everyone know and to share that vibration that the possibility is to reconnect to that childlikeness, to reconnect to that love, to really reconnect to that connection that we all are. We are all love. We are all made of that love, and that is the truth of what we are. And all the things that we see are differences are so shallow in the context of the depth of our sameness, in the depth of our love. And it's just a time for us all, again and again and again and again, to pray and to come into that experience, to whatever tools we use, whatever tools we hope to use. But it's time for us all to just surrender into that love, because it is there, and with that is that childlike joy that we can have as we walk through this earth. As we walk through this earth seeming from different countries, seeming from different ages, seeming from different religions, and we will have those things, but what we won't have is the feeling of separation, the feeling of division that we have now, that creates spying, that creates all the insanity that goes on all over the world, the ethnic cleansing, the, the terrorism. I mean, I've talked about this before. I mean, how do we get to the point where we strap bombs to ourselves and go into a public place. What level of separation, what level of insanity goes on in our head that by taking our own life and just taking all, as many others as we can, that that's going to bring us into love, that that's going to bring us into peace, that that's going to save our country, save our people. Our people is everyone. Our people is the dolphins and the whales and the trees. And it's time for us all to, to come into that recognition. And again, we have people who, whose lives are dedicated to that truth and that vibration to just travel the world with their love and their music and their workshops to spread that love. We have Isaac George with us tonight. He's a spiritual healer. He's a channel. He facilitates a transformational spiritual technology entitled uh, Mystery Schools for the New Millennium. And his life, since an awakening, since a recognition of that truth, of that oneness, is to spend every minute of every day as best he can into spreading that love and, and that oneness and that experience. And then we have Shanti Shivani with us, who's you know an old friend of the show, has been here you know many times before, and just her music is an avenue into that truth, into that love. She's an extraordinary singer-songwriter. She's a master musician and a druped singer. She is a sound healer. And her life, once again, is dedicated to that truth. And for all of us, how can we recognize the differences when the love is so strong? So for all of us, we know that we have to come into that truth again. That if we've forgotten it, and whatever level we've forgotten it, the time is now to come in, to come home again, to come home into the love. And that's, uh, Shanti has a new CD out, Sacred Fusion, and that's what it's about. It's different styles coming together in music. But I mean, what style is not from, from the root? What style is not from whatever we see God to be? What style is not from the root energy of life? So when we say we're going to fuse something, 
It's already fused. It's just we haven't gone deep enough or back enough or far enough or high enough. But it's time we did that and it's available. Now it is available. The, the teachings are here. The teachers are here. The tools are here. The vibrations here. The love is here as it always has been. But now it is really available to us as human beings. So, you know, let's go get them. What do you say? So, as we normally do, let's do a meditation. If you don't know a meditation, just settle in, just relax. Isaac's with us, Shanti's with us, and I'm telling you, it's a, it's a portal into love, into greater love, and that's what it's about. So please join me. Hi. So please settle in. There's a real experience available for the next 58 and some odd minutes. So uh, Shanti is going to do in her first set song and raga Shankara, and this is performed by Shanti Shivani, and it's it's magnificent. I heard it this morning. So just settle in. Thank you.
<laughs> that was beautiful. So we're on the set with Isaac. So you've had an interesting journey into that remembrance, right? I mean, Absolutely. it started when you were very young. At seven, you had an... Why don't you talk about that? Um, basically, um, I had an incident happen in a meadow, my parents' farm, uh, outside of Allentown, Pennsylvania. It was 1957. It was close to my seventh birthday. And I didn't have this conscious remembrance until seven years ago. So it was odd with the 7-7 what, what was thing. the experience that happened? Um, I was just out in the metal playing one day and basically from what the hypnotic regression showed me and what I remembered was that um, there was just an, an infusion of, of light that just happened in the middle of playing out in the middle of this meadow. And in the next instant, it's just all sound disappeared and there was just nothing but this hum. And out of the hum came a voice, and it was in a language I had never heard before in my life, and yet I understood the meaning of what was being said. And somewhere in the middle of my memory, and I actually recounted this during the regression, was saying, huh, okay, okay no. <laughs> and I just went, no. Um, and I became very afraid. I became very afraid of what was kind of shown before me, and I, I backed away and shut down and suppressed it mentally for almost 40 years. And uh, it came back uh, about seven years ago. So tell me, what was the trigger for it coming back, and how did it come back? And did you say yes? <laughs> did I eventually say yes? <laughs> no, um, I know you eventually <laughs> said yes. But I mean, how did it go seven years ago? Um, I had just been in, I've been living corporate life, and I've been married, and doing all the stuff that, that I thought was supposed to be doing, right? And uh, just completely out of the blue, uh, I encountered another human being who just woke triggered, up my codes, triggered, just triggered me. Right. And uh, I went into what, in the common parlance, spiritual parlance, is a kundalini awakening that lasted for about 20 months. And it, it, Why don't you it burned it out all that. people who are not so familiar well, with that. It's a, sans yeah, it's a Sanskrit term re re relating to the, the energy, the life force that's at the base of the spine in the human physiology, in, in the etheric body and in the physical body. And what happened was the triggering of this remembrance or this, uh, this episode uh, started that up. And it transformed me physiologically. It transformed my life. I had to let go of everything that I thought was true about who I was, uh, marriage included, my life, my career, um, for the most part, changed. And, um, and also I started having interactions with uh, what I call intelligences, other aspects of ourselves on other planes of reality. And one of these aspects that came in six months after this Kundalini awakening was an encounter with uh, a being that identified itself as Archangel Ariel, at that time just Ariel. The other symptoms that occurred was weight loss, uh, heat flashes, tremendous uh, feelings of ecstasy, also tremendous feelings of, of uh, pain and dissolution of the past because every time the energy would hit a block in a chakra, it would almost feel like a heart attack. Um, so there was a lot of uh, period of my life where I had to list, enlist the aid of others just to run my life on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Like balancing a checkbook was impossible for me and I had a background in finance. So uh, this 
carried over for about 20, 22 months. And then eventually after I had, was drawn or led to uh, taking my first Reiki class, then it started to, to begin to modify and So down. during this 47 year period, yeah. I mean, did you have like any spiritual base that you read? You know, Carlos Castaneda. Right, and, uh, right. Um, various things I was led to. In my late teens, I was led to Tibetan Buddhism, um, and then eventually to the works of Gurdjieff and also Edgar Cayce. So there was like an ongoing, uh, almost a mini awakening that occurred in my early 20s. And in the midst of that whole period, there was also a feeling of great depression because I didn't understand what, where my life was to go. So I kept reading and investigating and wanting to learn more and, and, and feel more things and experience more things. Uh, what eventually came to a, a crisis was at the age of 22 is that I had uh, uh, was experimenting with drug culture stuff and I had taken a substance that I which had been told was THC, synthesized um, THC, and it turned out to be a horse tranquilizer. I went through a near-death experience in which I was uh, rescued basically by an entity that materialized out of nowhere in the middle of a park at 9 o'clock in the morning and basically saved my life. He, he looked like a hospital orderly. Uh, but he couldn't have been more, looked like 16 or 17. And uh, he saved my life, and I woke up from that experience, and he was gone. And um, I changed my name. I basically started using my real first name two weeks after that. And then I moved to Virginia Beach, Virginia, and studied well, the Edgar Casey really stuff. Casey right. <laughs> Got inv investigated the ARE for quite a period of time. Um, met somebody from Oregon there, married, and shut down. Like within three years, I was just working in the hotel industry and in finance. and. Uh, kind of left that all behind until seven years ago. And then what was the progression after that? Uh, primarily through different um, jobs in, in corporate life, uh, finance, retail management, music industry, music retail industry. Uh, so I was gaining, I think, a lot of tools and skills of how to work with people, how to be able to uh, understand the psychology of people, how to understand how um, uh, through you know, being in a selling industry primarily, learn how to deal with conflict resolution. Uh, so I think I was picking up all kinds of skills that would take me to this place now that said, all right, you have this background, you have these contracts and agreements, now let's bring the whole synthesis together. Let's bring everything together, all the tools, everything that you know from your, from your business life, from your personal life, all your experience, and assist that, you know, assist others in coming back to themselves, coming back to home. I've had some incredible um, peak experiences over the seven years that I've, I've been on this path. And, uh, and, and they taught me the essential unity of all life, the essential unity of all of us. Uh, they've helped me remember who I am. They also have helped heal so many wounds of the past. And so uh, what I feel I'm offering now is, is a, uh, a technology or at least a, an opportunity to set an example for others to come into their own empowerment, their own sovereignty, and remember their divine nature. So when you say you're a channel, how would you define that? I mean, we've had other people who are channels mm -hmm. on the show. How would you define it? Um, what my experience was is that initially um, I didn't want to be a channel. Um, I was uncomfortable with the idea. I watched other people channel. What was the idea that you were uncomfortable with? Um, being noticed, being uh, uh, perhaps responsible for information that others might find, val uh, uh, you know, take and take as truth for themselves. I felt somehow um, uh, very f uh, uncomfortable and frightened by that to some degree. I felt I didn't want the spotlight on me. I didn't want to have any of that uh, uh, notoriety, it seemed like. And it took a while for me to get really um, to the place where I could accept that this was a gift, it was a contract, it was an agreement. Uh, the actual experience at times felt overwhelming to me, physically or emotionally. You mean when you were doing a yeah. actual physical when it, when it, when it happened, when it started uh, manifesting itself like about five years ago, and uh, I tried to suppress it, I tried to back away from it, but I understand now from this perspective that that was part of what was being discussed and when I was seven years old. Uh, that was an aspect of it. And the primary energy that I was becoming evident I was being led to work with or I had an agreement to work with was this, this archangelic energy, this Ariel, which is an aspect of myself, it's an aspect of you, it's, it's a representative or an archetype of divine consciousness. And um, uh, this energy's particular expertise uh, is very interested in the ascension of human consciousness and bringing us out of the dark age that we've been in, in our, in our experience. And so eventually I got comfortable with it. Eventually I started surrendering to it. And the more I surrendered, the easier th I got to be with it. But more than that, the easier my life became because I wasn't trying to control it. 
And do you find that, uh, I mean, are you conscious? I mean, we've had some people uh -huh. who that the, the channeled entity kind of takes over the physical form, it takes over the right. consciousness or... Um, I merge with the consciousness. I used to be a semi-conscious trans channel, if you want to get into the, the specific nomenclature, uh, in which I just stepped aside and Ariel took over the vocal cords or whoever I was channeling, if it was St. Germain or one of the other, other energies. Uh, and I was like sitting on the sidelines listening, you know, just as if I was out in the audience or, or the, the person I'm doing the private session with. So I got to observe and listen uh, to the information the same way uh, in a very objective manner. Um, then when the experience was over, usually the body was tired or I was, you know, feeling uh, certain experiences physically and I could only do so much. And then uh, along about the middle of last year, I had somebody from my, what I call my team appear at one of my presentations and came up to me afterwards and said, you don't have to do this through the body anymore and you don't have to do it through the ego structure. You can merge with these uh, intelligences, with these uh, wisdom aspects in your spiritual energy field and you don't have to go through the trauma. And, and does it feel different physically? Yes, uh, there's not as much up and down. I feel more unified, I feel more balanced, I feel more grounded specifically, I can function very effectively in the physical plane and still have that sense of connection all the time. Uh, so when I do channel now, it's more of a merge situation where the, it's uh, telepathic transference almost feeling, although I feel the presence of Ariel in the space and ever, as everybody else does. Um, it's quite noticeable, or if it's working with something like Metatron, there's a, a definite expansiveness. Now, why would one one entity or one mm -hmm. archangel come through? I mean, how does that work? Why can't it all come through one? Do they know different pieces of information? It's sort of like job specification or, or, or specialization. We all have a different skill level at our particular stage in evolution that, that makes you the interviewer, or makes you the host or the, or the creator of this show and makes, uh, allows me to do something else in the creative stream of things. Uh, Ariel has a different functionality as, as I'll, I'll just quote here. Ariel says, you know, I'm basically of a function that relates to the ascension of human consciousness by assisting in all tools necessary to bring um, the physical human body uh, to be able to hold more light, to be able to understand that there are biochemical electromagnetic uh, factors involved here uh, on a planetary scale as well as physical human biology. And Ariel is very much uh, that type of quality. Saint Germain, however, would have more of an interest in discussing the human issues uh, having to do with uh, relationship or uh, a consciousness of abundance or having to do with um, uh, some of the things that the human experience has taught him or taught somebody like Jesus of what it was like to go through the human evolution. And so there's more of a direct relatedness to that, to that information. So depending on who you're channeling for mm -hmm. and what information they seem to need at that time, right. it just instinctively that it's helper there. will come in right. that way. Right, it's sort of, uh, sort of need-specific or, or desire-specific. Sometimes there's an agenda. Uh, basically, uh, there'll be specific address or specific discourse, and the entity or energy or consciousness that, is, um, that features that particular d information the best will step forward to present it. Mm -hmm. Just. So is there like a general theme? I mean, is there like an underlying root? <laughs> Love is the answer we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> right. I mean, is there like, I mean, you've done what, hundreds of channelings yes. by now? Yes. So, and, and different archangels, different masters, right. different entities. Mm -hmm. And what would you say if you had a list three, five, ten? I mean, and what tools are, are, um, are the best available now? Okay. Uh, well, the main thing that, that has been brought through by... Um, uh, the Ascended Master Realm is, is some of these new tools in consciousness working having to do with particularly with sound healing, having to do with uh, being able to go in and actually surgically rewire distortions within the four lower bodies, which is what Mystery School addresses, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. Um, uh, St. Germain's uh, been called the, the, the sort of the shepherd or the overseer of the establishment of the seventh golden age on this planet. So he's sort of taking over the, the baton from, from Yeshua, from Jesus. Uh, Archangel Raphael focuses primarily on physical healing um, in terms of a, a task, orient, orientation. Michael, obviously for divinity or guarding the way to the, to the throne of each person's own divinity. Uh, Michael assists in protection and, and, uh, and balance. Um, 
So they all have quality. They all have a specific thing. So with me, I see the function of, for example, if, if I get called upon or get the information in meditation that we're going to do a Metatron transmission. Well, Metatron is uh, identified as being the architect of physical creation. So to me, what the information is going to be is usually high level, scientifically oriented or metaphysically and scientifically oriented to understanding the processes of what's happening on a planetary scale or a planetary level or in a solar level. Um, so that information may not appeal to people who are wondering how do I deal with my marriage or how do I deal with my, my job right now and then might appeal to somebody who's trying to understand what's going on with their physical bodies or understand what's going on with the environment of the planet or, or what's going on in terms of spiritual evolution. So there's a whole different focus. There's a, a more transpersonal focus with something like uh, Metatron would discuss. Uh, as opposed to Saint Germain or Yeshua or Mother but is Mary. there is there a uh, like a root? Oh, absolutely, from? absolutely. Yeah, getting back to your meaning, the underlying um, message always has been the unconditional love, the unconditional uh, and complete sovereignty of each unique aspect of the One, and that every person has a right to express their freedom, to express their complete unique individuality as an individuation of the One always understanding that that every person, everything, every aspect of reality is themselves. So why would you, you want to treat that badly or how, you know, how would you want to be in relationship with that? So it's uh, really a bringing a, a strong awareness again of our interconnectedness, our interdependence, and the fact that we're all rooted in love, all rooted in oneness. And, and that's uh, the primary message. And I would say the message right under that is, how do you lead each person back to that wisdom? How do you lead each person? I'll give them the opportunity to come back into that unity within themselves. And then the mystery schools are tools that you have gotten from all the right. different sources and right. trying to make available to people wherever mm -hmm. they want it throughout the world. Yeah, and it will, it will call to certain people, and whereas they may be attracted to another, what I refer to as a technology. They're just a tool. A belief system is a tool that takes you to the next belief until you come into pure awareness or pure knowing. Um, and so they're all valuable. They're all, they all count for something uh, in each person's path. And so somebody might be attracted. What I've brought into synthesis is an attraction uh, that will call to certain people to say, that's for me. I'm ready for this now. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm doing with that. Okay, well, maybe what we'll do now is uh, Shanti's second set. And then we'll All come right. back and talk about the, uh, the mystery, the mystery school. schools. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so Shanti's going to do her second set. Uh, her new CD, again, is Sacred Fusion. Uh, and the, uh, the, the piece she's going to do now is Improvisations in Raga Malkus. And it's performed by Shanti Shivani. So Shanti...
Wow, Shanti, that was fantastic. Mm. Thank you. Wow. wow. So we're back on the set with Isaac. So why don't you just talk a little bit about the mystery schools? Okay. Um, mystery schools, for those who may not have uh, been exposed to it, uh, relates to the, what happened in Atlantis and Egypt. After the fall of Atlantis, there was, um, a, the planet went into great density, and there was a lot of um, uh, lost traditions, lost technologies, lost uh, connection. Separation really began at that point on this planet. And um, the focus became uh, to help people reestablish that connection and also to heal a lot of the distortions that occurred at the, f the end of the Atlantean experiment. Egypt was the focal point. Egypt became the place where this all happened. And they created a series of initiatory experiences with all the temples along the Nile to bring people back into an awakening and awareness of their divinity. And sometimes it would take a lifetime or many lifetimes to be able to reconnect that way. Uh, those technologies are, you know, anywhere between three and 7,000 years old now. Uh, what is happening on the planet right now is an incredible acceleration. So obviously the technology has stepped up to match the amount of growth and, and uh, evolution that we're all going through right now. So what this mystery school was brought through as was a sort of a combination of assistance from galactic realms, from the Ascended Masters, to help this planet in this particular position that's in, in evolution for our species, to uh, who, those who feel drawn to it, to go ahead and be able to integrate and release all the distortions that have happened in the four lower bodies, primarily the mental ego structure, and then the emotional body, the physical, and the etheric blueprint that drives the whole thing. And then reconnecting that uh, then with our higher self. And um, so what, it's sort of a one day thing, and it's instead of taking a lifetime, people make a commitment to completely own the fact that they're creating their reality and own the fact that they're uh, uh, experiencing everything they're experiencing is of their own doing and then come into a place where they're consciously and deliberately uh, co-creating with spirit instead of uh, 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 the distortion of trying to co-create from the ego place. And you've also, we talked at the break a little bit that uh, we both felt that, you know, if, if we could do a, a little channeling mm -hmm. of uh, Archangel Ariel that that would be a nice thing. So why don't you just I'm, go do that? I'm getting the go-ahead on Yeah, that. go. <laughs> go, boy. <laughs> okay, I'd like to ask everyone to... Uh, go ahead, just keep talking. Okay, just uh, relax and just center for a few minutes. It's only going to take about 30 seconds, or if that. Greetings to you. Ariel be here. How are you? I am fine. How are you? Excellent, of course. And we could not pass up the opportunity at your invitation. Indeed, as you know from the standpoint of co-creation, uh, you uh, made the request, but uh, you also received the re request to make the request. Eh? Yes. <laughs> so, um, we have a brief synopsis that we'd like to uh, uh, sort of bring to your attention here. Uh, you began your show uh, discussing that which would be called children, or childlike behavior. And we wish to comment about that and ex expound on it just for a few minutes. And what it relates to is primarily that you are that innocence. And the innocence is the thing that you have um, shoved aside in the human consciousness in order to be, have the ability to judge. Now in judgment, then there is created expectation. And once expectation is absorbed back into the self, and you can live in the now, then innocence becomes its natural child. So innocence is, um, how should we say it, it's certainly the theme for you today. It is the theme for all the beings who are in hearing or feeling the vibration of this. Innocence is what you are at heart and at core have always been. You have never lost it. It is something that you maybe think you have misplaced somewhere along the way. However, it is the essence of who you are. You are children. You have been playing. Some of the things that you create when you are playing are not so pleasant, yes? It, it seems that way. And yet, even with the appearances as they are, you are still innocent. 
regardless of what looks to be tragedy, pain, suffering, it is at core spirit playing with you and you playing with your spirit. It is in essence a choice. And so in your choosing, you have the decision to experience that which would be considered balance or imbalance. It is as simple as that. You are innocent of the effect. It is only through your belief in uh, the cause and effect experience that you come to have an experience of what you call karma, which from our perspective is merely an imbalance of self. Once you bring the balance back into being, once you have accepted everything that you have created as being useful for your evolution, even that which seems to be suffering or pain or dis dis disconnecting or separation from source, once you have recognized it has all been an illusion, this game, and everything that you have created or uncreated is also part of it, then you have the option, and you have not only the option, you have the right to regain heaven inside. The kingdom is at hand. The kingdom has never gone away. And what is that kingdom? The state of innocence, the state of bliss, the state of ecstasy that you all desire and yet has always been just right there inside of you, right there beside you all the time. Everyone says, yes, but we, how can we experience that in your daily life? How can you experience that in your everyday moment? Stop trying to judge. Stop, stop your agendas and your strategies of trying to look too far ahead or perhaps think that somehow you're not enough and someone else has more. You are unique individuations of all that is. We are here to tell you from that perspective that we have that we see nothing but multidimensional masters playing throughout creation, playing throughout the universe. And therefore, you have a right to remembering the complete innocence of your being and the complete sovereignty of your mission, which is to explore on the behalf of spirit all that possibly can be. So you are welcome to play, but please do not forget the fact that you are always, in every moment, no matter what action you take, or what thought you think, or a belief you hold, that you are not being judged by your own higher self, by the all that is, then therefore you have the remembrance in that of your innocence. There, we're done. <laughs> All done, all finished, nothing else for this. <laughs> the massive audience you have available tonight, there's nothing else you care to say. What else is there but love? And that is the core of innocence. You know? And it's, it's something that if you have a, um, how would you say in your term, you have an inquiry or uh, something you wish to pursue along this line, we'd be glad to respond to it. But basically, um, you have the option at this time and in this space to in every moment, in every now, just remember that you have nothing to prove to anyone, to anything, and that you have the perfect right to become and be who you are in every now moment. So you have nothing to do, and you have everything to be. It's as simple as that. From our perspective, um, it is much simpler than what you have done. You've created a lot of structures, you've created a lot of um, interesting uh, machinations and manipulations of time space in order to make it look more complicated. As you well know, it is as simple as claiming, as as simple as decreeing and intending that you are one, that you are real, and that you are the only thing that is in the experience that matters. And that because that is true, you have to need to only recognize that every being and everything that you interact with has that same sacredness, that same wholeness, that same oneness, that same innocence. We rest our case. <laughs> case closed now. <laughs> We're done. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, don't forget to laugh. That always helps. Laughing is good? Absolutely. It heals the body. It, it does incredible things to your cellular structures. And uh, it also, um, how should we say, takes the edge off the ascension game. Please understand that the more that you're able to laugh at yourselves and at your experiences, then you have absolutely uh, taken the perspective that we have, which is don't take it so seriously. It, uh, you have never not been, and you shall always be. And so shall these things that you call the manifest realms. They are all part of the eternal nature of the one. So therefore, nothing is wrong. Only your perception of wrongness is a judgment that makes things and keeps things in a place of being wrong. You talked about earlier in the day, earlier in the show, those who strap 
incendiary devices to their bodies and step into crowds. And we would say, this person, based on their model of what is real, is doing nothing wrong. However, in our compassion and in your compassion, you can understand that this is a distortion of love and therefore worthy of understanding and worthy of mercy and worthy of forgiveness. So please, please, to re maintain your innocence, always, always, always remember your forgiveness. That which you receive in every now moment that you take a breath and that which you give unto others heals and does not destroy, brings into wholeness and does not keep in separation. All right? Sounds good to me. Excellent. So we are appreciating the time and we send you our blessing and give you our blessing and understand that in the wholeness we are one as unto you. Amen. Na Namaste. Namaste. fun? Yeah, it, was, it was good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Felt good then for me, except that it heated me up a little. Yeah, it heated up some yeah. people in the audience. There were people seem to be passing some out. Moving some energy. Like okay. There Clearing was some, some sort of weirdness going on around here. <laughs> Hard to say exactly. So we was shaking up something. All right. Because as soon as the channeling started, it's like the whole place started. I thought I was going to have to get up and start holding the whole thing. Set <laughs> Holy Christ. <laughs> so that's funny. Good. So uh, do you do this with groups? Do you do this individually? or uh, I do both. Um, personal sessions uh, I've done either in person or by phone. But uh, this started out, I, d I did the reverse of what most channels do, is most people start out slowly and usually in one-on-one -on -one with friends or, or, or whatever. And uh, um, they didn't fool around. Mm -hmm. They had me punked in front of larger groups from the very beginning. And uh, initially it was sort of like training wheels. You know, it was like word of mouth only, don't advertise, just invite people and have them show up and have snacks out. And, and here's what, what you'll talk about. So I had always had a title, a working title, and a little bit of a and paragraph. Danish. And that was it. And Danish, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple Bialis. <laughs> and... Uh, and people would come and there would be a meditation, usually a time with music, and then there would be a message and a uh, fellowship afterwards. And that was the way it began. So I began with groups and I felt more comfortable with that. One first person who called for a session, I just went into total panic. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh no, if, what if they do something that I tell them to do or Ariel tells them to do and it doesn't work out? So that was a little, that was a big step. Are in there growth. specifics? I mean, like there weren't, yeah. there are specifics with individuals. Yeah, more specific very, than very the, specific than the channeling that we just witnessed. Yeah, well, I get tonight uh, with, with the based on, on the time given that right. it had to be pretty general, but uh, emphasize some particular point. Uh, with the, the, uh, the information I get from the clients, primarily, because uh, I don't like listening to other people's tapes, is uh, they get very practical step-by-step -step stuff. I had a, um, a couple in Portland, Oregon, who were very interested in opening a new bookstore. Uh, well, not a bookstore, a metaphysical shop, and they didn't want it to be like another bookstore. So they said, can we have a session with St. Germain? Because we feel that he can give us the guidance. We want to dedicate the business to the furthering of consciousness, and we want to find out what it is that we should be doing, you know, what it is that would help us uh, put the store together. And so they asked, set up a whole, like, list of questions and went right down the list, like talking with a business advisor. And the, the business is successful, they're still doing great, and they decided not to be in the book business. So they're into crystals and feng shui and artwork and, and the fountains and so forth. And um, yeah. it's working for them, and it's working for the people who are their clients. And they're growing and building their business, and they're in service. That's their primary focus. So in that regard, yeah, it can be very, very specific and very practical. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Why not help tune up your car? I, no, I don't. <laughs> And you had to ask me about fixing the tire. I didn't well, know. Well, yeah, that. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I asked you. I know. Yeah, and, and you I, had the compressor. I did have the compressor. <laughs> See how it all works. It is all perfect. It is all perfect. So, uh, do you find yourself? Okay, another question. Uh -huh. Do you always shut your eyes? Yeah, there's a um, reason for that. I mean, you, I asked that because everybody asked me, "Do you always wear sunglasses?" <laughs> I just, uh, Let's talk about somebody else's eyes for a minute. Um, basically, I don't have to do that anymore, uh, except that from my inner knowing, inner guidance, it helps me to 
stay focused. It helps me to not um, engage with anybody else's eyesight during the channeling because everyone here will have a different perception of what is happening in the moment and they will project that reality whether they want to intentionally or consciously or not and so I, it is very important for me to stay clear and this way and not interact with anybody else or anything anything else. So you find that people have reactions because my feeling was basically I was just taking it in. I mean mm -hmm. it was kind of I mean, I don't think I had much of a reaction no. one way or the other. Um, I've seen that happen at, at events, more at public events than private ones. Some of the private stuff I've seen, uh, I've had reports of people saying, oh, I've got to go lie down, you know, I'm going, you know, they feel this, all this energy or they feel a healing of some kind. Uh, at the public events, sometimes the coughing or um, people feeling emotional and things of that nature is, is another form of healing. You know, there's something blocked, something is, is wanting to be cleared, uh, energy starts moving and um, stuff happens. I don't know exactly what it is. I've never really gone into saying, I'm curious to know what the details are. It's just that um, uh, stuff does manifest and then sometimes it's in the people, sometimes it's in the environment. We had uh, uh, an event, a lightning and thunder event once in Sedona at a private residence near the Chapel of the Holy Cross. Inside? It outside, but it was, it was on break. But it was pretty, this is it was pretty biblical. My carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it was major, majorly strange because uh, all of a sudden, in the middle of the, the discourse, Ariel said, "Everybody get up and go outside." So everybody went up, a w out, went outside, and this big wind came up, and and lightning flashed, and thunder rolled, and a little sprinkle of rain came down, and then it all of a sudden quit as fast as it had started. And everybody came in, and Ariel joked and said, "How do you like our wind shower? You needed to get your fields cleaned out." And uh, Nobody laughed very much, you know, it was sort of apparently everybody was in a little bit of shock. But I don't know what happened to that. All I remember is there was dead silence on the tape for that period of time, except for a rumbling in the background. So I don't know what happens uh, in what has happened in the past, but I was sensed a lot of energy things happening just in that short message. But I don't know what it is. I don't generate it. So mm -hmm. I don't know what, I don't know exactly what occurs. If, if I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, tell me. He's staying in my house, so I got him another couple of days. So, <laughs> so I mean, and, and like you're talking now, and uh -huh. you were talking as Ariel right. three minutes ago, five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, would you say you felt physically different? I feel a little expanded. I feel a little warm. Now? Yes. After the yeah, experience? after the experience. As, as opposed to before? As opposed to before, I felt a lot I felt different. I just feel uh, just a sense of more energy around me right here and uh, a little hot spot up here and that's about it. Nothing mm -hmm. shining right down on my head so I don't know. Uh, I do feel different. I always feel uplifted. I always feel more energetic now whereas before when I was doing it through the body I felt a little depleted. You know, it was a little, a little stressful on the cells in the central nervous system. I, and do you think, like people, like if you were saying this is Isaac, mm -hmm. do you think people would respond differently if you say it's Archangel mm -hmm. Michael or Archangel? You know, I mean, you're putting like a right. title on information. It's not yeah. at some point. It's not the information as much. No, and it's, it's you know, like oh, that's right. a respectable. Name. <laughs> yeah, that it, one's it's we spirit, recognize. Right. It's a brand name thing. I think I'm moving toward that place and I think that's what all the preparation in the last year has been is that it's not so much about um, uh, a here and there thing more of a um, when it's when we're talking merge when we're in our oneness it doesn't matter what label I have what name tag I have on or what name tag they have on you know if we're working in a place of consciously it's the uh, vibration being the in the vibration of oneness yeah. then it, it's not going to matter whether it's Isaac or something else so I'm not really caring too much about what people put on the title. I don't put anything on it. What mm -hmm. is the message? Is it help? And do people get something out of it that helps them get to oneness? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've reached the end of the show again. <laughs> so we're, we're heading out. Anybody okay. wants information on where Isaac's doing workshops, mystery school, Shanti's doing anything, 805-687-2053. Good night. God bless you. Thank you.